You know, folks, sometimes I start to, to wonder and question my sanity. Like, what, what am I doing wrong in life to constantly have equipment issues? Or should I say John Deere issues is more like it. That's not supposed to be like that. I'm not doing an oil change. So the good news is I think I figured out and it was my own knucklehead to move uh, the issue going on with the 1025R. I have so many different pieces of equipment that I forget all the different solutions that are a little different from model to model to model. Now a bit of good news though is that I did get my Z970R back which has been in the shop for a month. Now I, I, gotta, I gotta give you a frame of reference that I don't like abuse well, I mean, I work it hard, but I don't abuse my equipment. I don't put high hours on it. This is all low hour equipment. There's 200 and some hours on this zero turn. There's 200 and some hours on the 1025. I think we have hit 400 hours now on the skid steer. But these are all low hour machines that I have bought because I don't want to have issues. I don't want to have downtime. So you can see the oil underneath there. And I think that's just going to be the drain plug that didn't get tightened up. Um, now, I, I did talk to the tech over at John Deere about it, and I guess they have a problem. They're, they're a plastic drain plug that are just giving them fits, and they don't tighten down, or maybe they don't seal well. I don't know what it is, but just go back to a steel plug, I suppose. Anyway, I think that's going to solve that minor uh, oil leak that we have going on, but it was in because I was mowing Memorial Day weekend. We are now in July 4th weekend, but Memorial Day weekend is when I had an issue with it, took it in right after that weekend there, but it just stopped in the middle of mowing. Blades wouldn't turn on, it wouldn't turn back on, it wasn't overheating. Um, seemed like it was starving for fuel or something, but you know, they had it for a couple of weeks working on different carb issues and fuel line issues and everything else, and they, they finally figured it out. They also replaced the ignition switch on there because those were having problems too. So a lot of things going on. You know, it was out of warranty, so very frustrating to have to pay that kind of a bill. And now the skid steer is going to be out of commission. Obviously, something major going on with that. Played with it for a couple of hours here at the new property, and now, who knows? I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be weeks again. I'm, I'm down with this, so it's getting pretty frustrating. So anyway, for now, we are going to clean up that oil mess there and then put the 1025R to work to see if we solve our overheating problem, and we'll let you know what we did. While we were shooting this video, we had a call. The John Deere tech was on his way out, so he got us up and running temporarily with a permanent solution going to be here next week. Tell you about it at the end of the video. So this is another product from KBC Tools. We showed you those wipes previously and uh, they are a company that are part of our discount club. So if you have a shop, a barn, whatever, you can save 5% with code GWT on their products. They'll ship them right to you. So way to support a smaller business, support me and get the products you need around your shop. So this is gonna be an absorbent for the, uh, the accidental oil spill like what you see here. Didn't think I would be using this today, but good thing we have it. It's kind of there for emergencies, unplanned events, that kind of thing. And of course, I don't have a scoop of any kind here. I don't, I don't think that there's one here, but uh, I'll just kind of scoop it out by hand and, and throw it on there. Oh, that's kind of cool. I didn't know that either. In a pinch, you could use this under tires to improve traction on ice and snow. So if you are stuck in your drive or somewhere nearby and you can grab this stuff that'll help out with that too but we got a pretty good size spill i think we're going to use quite a bit of this it says to rub it in with a broom hopefully your oil spills aren't this big because this is taking a lot of stuff. What do you think? Cover the liquid with a layer of absorbent, work clay into liquid with stiff broom, add more product as needed until liquid is absorbed and floor is dry. Oh, you can use it for odor absorption as well. Line trash cans or other containers with absorbent to manage odors and leaks. Nice. 
make a mess of your broom, huh? What do you think? Yeah. This is easier than using a bunch of like rags or paper towels, huh? I haven't had to clean up an oil spill of this magnitude. All right, so I don't know if I should have left the first layer on longer or not. Um, but put an extra layer on there now, just a thinner one. So we'll check back on this. We're gonna leave it here for a while, come back towards the end of the video and see if it pulls any more of that uh, oil out of the concrete or not. But that was way easier than being down here with rags or something else sopping all this up. Works pretty good. Folks, we are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a ballast weight solution for your tractor. You know I'm all about safety and this is just a perfect match. Liquid ballast is one of the most cost effective solutions. In fact, there's liquid ballast on this tractor right now, right inside these rear tires. So it's hidden, it's out of the way, it gives you that extra stability you need when you're using the front end loader. It gives you safety to keep those rear wheels planted on the ground and it gives you traction when you need it. Well, why RimGuard? It is a natural product that is gonna be safe around animals and livestock in case you get a puncture and it leaks out. That means it's also gonna be safe on your wheels as well. You know the old calcium chloride that'll rust those things out and ruin them. It is also the heaviest natural ballast weight on the market today and the most convenient, which is available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. So head on over to rimguardsolutions.com to find a dealer near you. All right, so let's get this mounted on there. We're gonna do a little cultivating trying to keep the weeds at bay and I've been doing the bigger areas you know the areas with more space between them with uh, the tiller and the disc whatever happens to be on my tractor or the most convenient to hook up at the moment but now we got to get in between those corn rows try to knock down those weeds a bit do what we can I'm not really doing any spraying for weeds so much this year a little too far Need to clean this thing off. <laughs> Using the heavy hitch, better hiller. And I'll tell you what, I get a lot of emails asking me if I sell a, uh, a better hiller. And they don't even, they don't know that I uh, have made some videos on this one. So I don't, I don't sell this, but this is a heavy hitch product. And so they're one of the discount club members too. You get 5% off with code GWT. So a lot of items we do sell ourselves that we show you, but there are certain items like the heavy hitch products that you're gonna order directly from, uh, right from the manufacturers. It's just the cheapest way to go about it for you guys. And uh, certain manufacturers are willing to do that and others aren't, so heavy hitch is one of them that does. It's a two inch receiver mounted unit. So we're using it on the, the Versa bracket, so you, can, you don't need to have this red Spico if you don't want to. Uh, but it's not a three-point mount for this better hiller. It's a receiver mount, so you have to have something on your three-point with a receiver to connect it. And so then with this rail here, it allows for adjustment left, right. So I'm not going to tighten these down yet. I'm going to wait until we get out there in, in a row, and then I'm going to shift them left, right, whatever I need to in order to get them centered where I want. Percussion. I never was much in the in the marching band, you know. I guess pretty much if I'm behind the tires, though, it should be about right because I'm not going to drive over the corner. Huh? Kind of going towards the inside edge of the tires. All right. 
right? <clears throat> okay. wasn't feeling very confident cultivating in between those narrow rows and the corn. Uh, they're pretty close together. Felt like I may do more damage to the roots than, um, than the grass would do growing around it. But plus the deer are eating the heck out of it. So, you know, I'm really growing it for them anyways, right? Uh, so we are moving on. Gonna, well, we got the tiller hooked up and you saw us disc up. We've plowed a strip screen area that we're gonna do. So I'm gonna disc, or sorry, I'm gonna till and then after that, I'm gonna come back through and see with our screening material that we have. Again, this stuff's gonna grow like, like really tall, like way taller than me. So I'm excited to see how that turns out this fall. So I'm gonna put a food plot in this whole little cubby area back here, and it's gonna be just fully protected. I think it's gonna be a hot spot for deer, at least that's the hope. First year out here, so we're gonna find out. So far, this is gonna sound crazy, but the tractor has not overheated, even though that's all we did with it. When I was out there lightly disking, where's my disc? The disc is right over here it was overheating after just a couple of passes. So we are in good shape so far. I think the problem is solved, but this is gonna be the real test. I have definitely overheated this particular tractor when it was working properly with the tiller on it. So we're gonna put it to the test now. folks the tractor did not overheat this is about as 
taxing of a job as you can put on a tractor like this. Working it in low gear, four wheel drive, have the tiller fully engaged, a lot of rocks in this soil too, a lot of, lot of side clumps that are still getting chewed up and everything else. It's in the 80s today, not the hottest summer day out, but a, a nice summer day as well. So it's a good situation to put it to the test. The fix was super easy. I'm, I'm just such a knucklehead. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you what it is, but I'm glad it worked. But overall, four foot tiller on 1025, that's the right matchup. Did some bang up work out there on that uh, strip that we're gonna put in as well. So we, we plowed that, let it sit for a while, disked it, let it sit for a while, tilled it. And the corner where we, like you're right in the corner of the L, that actually got four passes. So you can see the difference there with uh, four passes instead of just an up and down, there was you know four passes overall in there. So that made a big difference. Let me show you, <laughs> let me show you what we did. It's, and some of you guessed it in the previous video. So not, not every tractor has this, but this model has it. And this screen here, it's already starting to clog back up a bit. I had cleaned this back in, in May and we've only put maybe 10, 12 hours on this, but it was completely caked in dust. And then you know how your phone or your computer says, warning, memory full? I'm pretty sure that's where my brain's at right now. And uh, I just totally forgot about this. I, I cleaned the air filter, I checked the fluids here. And then at that point, I was personally convinced that it was um, the thermostat, I, I really was. And so I hauled this thing all the way down to, to my dealer, pulled it off the trailer, said, hey, can you, can you come take a look? He comes out here, opens the hood, pulls this thing out right away. And like, literally as soon as he was like reaching his hand towards it, I was like, oh my gosh. You know, what a, what a knucklehead move. So that is enough right there for your machine to overheat. This thing was full in just a few hours time, full of dust and dirt and caked in there in less than 10 hours worth of time. We never even thought that would have happened, but that's all it needed. Now, if you're having overheating problems, this experience was different than the 4720 experience. And so with the 4720, when it was overheating, if you put it down at idle, that needle would creep back down. Same thing happened last year with the 1025 when we were tilling and it overheated. We put it down to idle and you could see that needle creep back down. Well, this time that didn't happen. It was different. It would stay in the whole overheat situation. That's because of this restriction here. There was nothing, whether it was at, at, at idle or at full throttle, there was nothing to let that heat dissipate. It was just gonna continue building up. And so that was the challenge. It acted differently, but that was the cause there. So if you're having overheating issues, you know, make sure you check out this kind of stuff. I, I just completely, I just flat out forgot about it. So whatever, great fix. Didn't have to spend weeks in the shop. That's great. Just drove it down to the tech. I did have to trailer it up there, but hey, problem solved, we're back at work. All right, so this has been sitting on here for over an hour, our second layer. Oh yeah, okay. Definitely dried it out. I mean, the staining is still there, of course. I don't really know a way around that, but um, it really seemed to, to suck it up. Cool. I don't know if it'll do anything or not. I was also worried about that stuff really getting stuck in here. Oh, really? Yeah, it doesn't. I mean, it's all come out pretty good. Still leaking. Still leaking oil. John Deere Tech just took off. He got us back up and running temporarily. So minus one function, he found out what the problem was. It is a hydraulic leak. It's in the high speed line. So the regular low speed is gonna work just fine. Uh, he, he topped off the fluid. I should have asked him how much he put in there. He only had a, a five gallon bucket and he didn't use the whole thing. I think he used a decent amount of it, but not all of it. So what happens is that this line is resting on the bottom of the pan, right in the, right in the very bottom. And so as debris and any moisture or anything else accumulate, that line will rust. They've seen this happen before. And so that's what happened in this case. It developed a pinhole leak. And so when I'm in high speed to go faster from point A to point B, 
and that pinhole leak is just starting to shoot out. And so then it all builds up and rests on the bottom pan down inside the, the skid steer. And then when you park it, it just slowly drains out overnight. So it's not actively draining when you're just driving it around in low speed, but when you're in high speed, that's what's happening. So I'm not using high speed right now, just low speed. They topped it off. I should be okay for the time being. They have a new line ordered. It's a Friday before July 4th weekend. Highly unlikely it's gonna show up tomorrow, but probably show up sometime next week. They said it's a pretty easy swap out. I should be good to go. So other than that, I wanna thank you for following along. If you do enjoy tractor videos, stuff in action, features, problems, business topics with tractors, all sorts of stuff, hit that subscribe button to tag along. And if you're in the market for an attachment for your tractor, the front end loader, the three point hitch, or even something like this for your skid steer, pallet forks, all sorts of things, grapples as well, we can help you out. Check out goodworkstractors.com. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Yeah.